seen on the medial side of the eye where we see this lacrimal sac that leads into this nasolacrimal duct that's going to drain into the nasal cavity. Image is coming in. It's going to pass through these eyelids, where you have eyelashes on each side, and conjunctiva, and then it's going to encounter the cornea. Once it gets past the cornea, it's going to be in the anterior chamber with that water-based fluid, the aqueous humor. It's now going to come through the opening that's the pupil that was surrounded by color called the iris. That image comes in and encounters the lens. The lens is going to accommodate by shape. That lens is suspended by the ciliary body that's all around it. Starting off on the inner side with these little suspensory ligaments and working my way out to these ciliary muscles. As that image is passes this ciliary body, it now is in the back chamber, the posterior chamber, where it encounters the important fluid, the vitreous humor. That image comes back and all of a sudden it encounters this spot. doesn't like it. Uh, I don't like it. Okay, sometimes referred to as the optic disc or the blind spot. What's really going to happen is that light will bend as it always does. As the light actually bends, it then bends in the appropriate manner to encounter this fovea that's sitting right here. That fovea is going to be connected to that retina. And now the image is going to be inverted, but it's going to make its way down into the optic nerve. Running along with the optic nerve is going to be the artery in the vein. The optic nerves are going to project down to the optic chiasm, back to the optic tracts, to the occipital lobe for processing of information. Okay, does that make sense? Not too bad. See how we did that? That would be a better way than staring at a picture and sitting there trying to memorize all the words. Talk yourself through light coming in or an image coming in. What structures am I encountering? Now, the problem is going to be, and we'll do it when we get to the cow eye in a second, is that maybe there's a picture like this or an image like this, but there's definitely going to be a cow eye that's cut open. So while you're talking yourself through the structures, you're going to have to get comfortable with this view because the, the cow eye is going to be cut like this and flayed open. And some things are going to be pinned in it. Okay, and we'll kind of go over that when we do the cow eye together. Now when we're done this and we break up, you're going to see there's a whole slew of activities that Dr. Lovell wants you to do that are outlined on your sheet and in your, and in your book. Do them. They are fair game, and he says, and Dr. Lovell doesn't kid around. It's a Canadian thing. I don't know what it is. But usually Canadians actually really have this incredible sense of humor. What happened, man? But anyway, so usually what you're going to see is that those things are fair game on the practical. He will put them on there. Anytime a physiologist has an opportunity to put something physiology-wise on a practical, they will. That's the reverse with Dr. Lovell. Dr. Lovell's an anatomist first. He's a physiologist second. Levels are reversed. Physiology is first, and anatomy is second. So you already know that about level. You already know that. How many times have you already said that? Hundreds. Hundreds. That's it. And the channel opens. Physiology thing. Whereas, you know, anatomy type people are like, there's the part, and here's how it works. Just does reverse. But point is, do the exercises. There will be stations based upon that. Okay. Now, while we got ourselves up here, let's go ahead and talk about the ear in terms of the structures. We'll do the cow eye together. There's a little man, and he wants in. He's going to find any passageway he's going to to get in, but he's a confused man. Because the first passageway he tries to go in is the ear. And unfortunately, the man's going to find that he can't really get in because there's going to be a door in his freaking way. There's going to be some windows along the way, 
but you know, there's a little man who's trying to get in, and the little man's trying to get in your ear hole. It's a little, cre- it's a little, it's a little, it's a little creepy. There's some hair, uh, you, again, there's hair there. You all have them. Just let me know. You have them. Some of them are denser than others. So we have the out- external ear structures that you see here. As you kind of see in your hand now, we have the tenna, which is this structure here. That's this big, sunken. And again, it's mine. Look. If I tilt my head down and I ran at the appropriate speed, <laughs> I probably would take off. <laughs> now that's that oracle right here. That's the pinna. That's the external portion of the air. Mm-hmm. That leads into the next structure that is the external auditory canal. When we look at the ear, we've divided up into a couple of things. We have an external ear, we have a middle ear, and then we're going to have an internal ear area. The external ear area, we just partially talked about it. Here's our oracle, our pinna. What was, this is a hole in the cranium. Remember what the hole was called? External auditory meatus. This is the external canal. So our little man crawled up here. He used the little hairs as footholds. That's how he held, held, held on. He grabbed the little hairs and pulled himself in. Now the little man's in here. And he's like, all right, this little, this is okay, a little sticky, a little waxy, but I, I, I might be able to make my way in. So he's crawling along. He's crawling along. He's still in the external ear. And he's like, man, I'm in. I'm all the way in. And all of a sudden he comes in here and he's like, ah, oh, crap. There's something blocking my way. I don't know how the hell I'm getting inside now. Huh? What, the accent? Yeah. <laughs> There's a Scott in the background someplace. I'm a real mutt. There's somebody from the island up there someplace. All right, so now I'm coming in. He encounters a thing, and all of a sudden it's a big membrane. It's the tympanic membrane. And now the little man's in for a real treat. Because lo and behold, a car blast went off out here. And the car blast made its way through the aura, the oracle, into the external canal, past the little man, onto the tympanic membrane. And the tympanic membrane started to go, rah, 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 rah. and then the little man goes, oh, 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 crap, maybe I should back myself out. But he's stuck. He's got wax. So he's really screwed now. So he's sticking there. He's like, well, I'm not going to sit around and see what's happening. Huh? So. Huh? You're going to be wonderful. <laughs> 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 We've already done some of them, and he looks at me, you know, and he's like, <laughs> I'm like, hold on, hold that thought. We'll come back to this in a couple months. <laughs> so now we're going to come in. The little man's staying in there, and he encounters that tympanic membrane. He can see two windows, but they're friggin' closed. He's like, damn it, it's closed. Wraps on him, so maybe I can get in there. Because he can see that there's a window right behind the tympanic membrane and right behind these three little bones. And he notices that the window is oval, called the oval window. He looks to his right, and he sees that there's another window that's going to lead into this structure that's right here. That's what he's looking at right here. This window right there. He sees this window, and he sees this window. He's looking through there, because the tympanic membrane is like a big piece of glass. He's looking through the glass saying, oh, man, I'm going to get in. If I could just get past this membrane, I'm in. So he goes and he looks, and he sees this window called the oval window. He sees this window that's going to lead to this little area that's going to be called the cochlea. This window looks nice and round, doesn't it? It's called the round window. So he's still looking around. He's like, I think I can get in. And lo and behold, he says, well... I brought my Swiss Army knife. You don't leave home without it. It's kind of like pockets in the underwear. It would be useful if you had them. You'd use them for something. And so he whips out the Swiss Army knife, and he's like, I'm just going to cut through the membrane. I'm going in. Cut through. He's sticky, but he makes his way through the tympanic membrane. Now he's hanging out right about here. He's now entered the middle ear. He left the external ear, and he's now sitting in the middle ear. And he's like, well, which way do I go? Do I go to the left and climb up these, this little mountain? Or do I go to the right 
and try to go in this way.